It started like any other late night at the office. Everyone else had already left, and the silence had settled in like a thick blanket over the floors. Only the soft hum of the air conditioning and the faint glow of the emergency exit signs remained. I had one last task to finish, but I was getting the feeling that I was the only one still awake in the entire building. The clock showed 11.45 p.m. I had no business being there that late, but deadlines are deadlines, right? And I had pushed it a little too far this time. I packed up my stuff, shut down my computer, and made my way to the elevator. That's when it all started to get... weird. Now, usually, the elevator is pretty fast. Third floor to the ground floor? Easy. 30 seconds tops. But tonight, as soon as I pressed the button, the doors slid open much quicker than they should have. Inside was just... empty. But there was something about it that felt off. Like the air inside was heavier somehow. It's hard to explain. I ignored it, too tired to care, and stepped in, pressing the button for the ground floor. The doors closed. The familiar ding echoed through the small space, and the elevator started its descent. But after only a few seconds, there was a sudden jolt. The kind of jolt that makes your heart skip a beat and your brain scream, this is not good. The elevator stopped dead. No sound, no motion, just stillness. And as if it wasn't creepy enough already, the lights flickered once, twice, and then darkness. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not exactly the type to handle pitch black silence in a tiny metal box very well. I fumbled around in my pocket for my phone and turned on the flashlight. The light was weak, casting strange shadows across the walls, but at least I wasn't in total darkness anymore. I hit the emergency button. Nothing. No sound. No response. Just that heavy silence, like the elevator had swallowed me whole. After a few deep breaths, I tried to calm myself. It's just a technical glitch, I told myself. It happens. Someone will fix it. Any second now. Just wait it out. But then I heard it. A faint sound, almost like someone whispering, coming from somewhere behind me. Now let me be clear. I was alone in that elevator. Or at least I was supposed to be. I spun around, shining my flashlight in every direction. Nothing. The whispering stopped. I laughed. A nervous, shaky laugh, trying to convince myself I was just hearing things. Stress. Lack of sleep. It all makes sense, right? But then the whispering started again. This time, it was clearer. And this time, it wasn't just a whisper. It was a voice. A woman's voice. Soft, but urgent. Help me, it said. Now I've seen enough horror movies to know that this is the part where you leave. You run. You get out. But running wasn't exactly an option, considering the doors were sealed shut. So, I did the next best thing. I yelled back, Who's there? Silence. I took a step toward the wall, where I thought the sound was coming from. I pressed my ear against the cold metal, but there was nothing. Just the sound of my own breathing. That's when the elevator started moving again. Slowly, creaking, like an old ship on rough waters. But instead of going down, like I expected, the elevator started going up. Higher and higher, past the floors it was supposed to stop at. Fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor. Okay, this wasn't funny anymore. I hit the button for the ground floor again, but the elevator ignored me, continuing its climb. At this point, I was ready to take the stairs. Only problem was, I had no idea where the elevator was going. Finally, it stopped. The door slid open, revealing a hallway that I didn't recognize. I had worked in this building for years, and this hallway? I had never seen it before. It was dimly lit, with a single flickering light bulb hanging from the ceiling. The walls were lined with old, faded wallpaper that looked like it belonged in a haunted house rather than a modern office building. And then I saw her. Standing at the far end of the hallway was a woman. Her back turned to me. She was wearing an old-fashioned dress, like something out of the 1950s, and her hair was long and dark, flowing down her back. She didn't move. She just stood there, completely still, like she was waiting for something. Or someone. Then, out of nowhere, the whispering started again. Only this time, 
It was coming from all around me, from the walls, the ceiling, the floor. Help me, help me. Over and over again, the words echoed through the hallway, growing louder and more frantic with each repetition. I covered my ears, but it didn't help. The voices were inside my head now, filling every corner of my mind. I turned and ran back to the elevator, slamming the button to close the doors. But of course, the doors didn't close. They just stayed open, mocking me as the whispering grew louder and louder. I looked back at the woman, but she was gone. The hallway was empty. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the doors slid shut. The elevator jolted back to life, descending at an alarming speed. My legs were trembling, my heart racing as the floors flashed by. Five, four, three. I braced myself for whatever was waiting at the bottom. When the doors finally opened, I was back on the ground floor. The familiar lobby was empty, silent, and still. I stepped out of the elevator, half expecting to hear the whispering again. But there was nothing, just the sound of my own footsteps echoing through the room. I made my way to the front doors, not daring to look back. As I pushed them open and stepped into the cool night air, I let out a shaky breath. Whatever had just happened, I was glad it was over. I wasn't sticking around to find out more. As I walked to my car, I glanced back at the building one last time. The lights in the elevator were flickering again, 